My name's Robert Frith. I'm a photographer. I run a studio in Perth. There. I actually have trouble saying my own name. <laughs> I guess I'd call myself a Perth generalist because I don't believe Perth's the sort of town you can specialise in. And other than that, I don't like specialising, I actually like variety. You know, I couldn't face knitwear every day or, and I couldn't face food every day, but I love shooting food and I love shooting knitwear. And I think I'm like a lot of photographers, I have a pretty short attention span, fairly impatient. My mum accused me of loving photography because of the instant gratification that it gave and you know, I think there's, there's something in that. One of my favourite shoots, it goes back a little way, was one I did for Rio. They were promoting the work they were doing with Aboriginal communities in the northwest, the Kimberley. It was just a dream, it was six days and they wanted six shots, you know, just a camera on the back all the freedom in the world just to make the best shot out of what was actually happening. The community were fantastic. They had some stories to tell that had been swept under the rug for decades, you know, probably a century. And that was part of what the cross-cultural training course was about. We went to a school and um, the football oval there is actually just rocks. I mean, I kid you not. And they're belting around on there in bare feet, kicking this ball. I mean, the kids are always fantastic wherever they are, because they're so unpredictable. You just, um, you keep getting new stuff from them all the time. I shoot these little destination stories for a couple of magazines, like Delicious and Qantas magazine. Those ones are always a joy. You know, there's no prescription. I don't have to photograph the dish there. I don't have to photograph the exterior. I just have to get something that's interesting, you know, that they can caption and tie into the article. One of the wonderful things about those sorts of stories is the narrative aspect of it. And as a result, you always have your antennae up for um, opportunities. You know, we're hurtling up the road at 110 k's and now almost in Geraldton. There was one of the roadside stalls and they're selling rock melons. You know, you don't even think about it. You stop and introduce yourself. You know, meet some great people and get some great shots. We do a lot of work for Curtin University and um, the designer we worked with there had this concept where they wanted to drop in these abstract backgrounds. So we shot a lot of green screen stuff and the modus operandi was they get sort of 20 of these um, first year, second year students, get them in a bus, bus them over here and just really kind of rev them up. We have some great fun doing that, just taking them as far as they will go. Sort of extreme shots never get used but that's the only way to, to get the sort of relaxed cheerful sort of stuff that they're hoping to get. Fossicking through all my old transparencies which I've been having scanned, I keep looking at these old pictures and going, God, I used to be a good photographer. And a lot of it's, you know, I guess what people are calling street photography now, a very response to the moment. I'm still a great fan of people like Robert Frank and Lee Friedlander, those guys particularly, Walker Evans to a degree. I'm really interested in finding a way of exposing our poor relationship with nature, but without using rubbish and you know, a lot of negative stuff that's, um, that does get used. You know, if I could do something you know, with the only real skill I've got, if I could find a way to do that, that, that would be, um, I'd die happy.